Hey, lips are swollen. Not because I have lip injections. I keep getting messages saying that I am lying about having gotten lip injections and I just haven't. I just cry a lot and I swell. My face is starting to break out and into stress hives. So that's fun. I'm just gonna put on some hydrocortisone cream. I'm crying because I'm having a really bad anxiety day and I had a doctor's appointment today and it just kind of heightened it. And we all know that when I get really anxious, I need to talk about it. I need to do something about it because if I don't, I'll just all physically combust. I get a lot of questions about my anxiety and um, I need to do something and I feel like talking. So I thought I'll kind of just talk about my experience with anxiety and like the complete like history of it. It's not gonna be like perfect because I kind of like blocked a lot of it out from when I was younger, but I kind of just wanted to talk about my anxiety and where I'm at now and maybe it'll help somebody or maybe it'll make you feel a little bit less alone to know that somebody else is feeling the way that you are. I'm sorry if I like cry throughout it. I'm just really anxious. It's gonna be all over the place. I'm 22 right now and I was diagnosed with severe anxiety and depression when I was starting middle school. I believe it was sixth grade. So I think I was like 11. I wasn't diagnosed until late sixth grade. And for me, sixth grade was middle school. And my anxiety started kind of like the summer before that, I think. Um, and I didn't know it was anxiety. Um, I just remember always complaining to my parents about how I didn't feel good. I just, that's all I knew. It was just, I would just constantly complain about not feeling good and it would get really bad. My body would tingle, like start to feel like TV static and tingle. And I spent almost every night sleeping on the floor of my parents bedroom because I just felt like something was wrong and I wanted to be close to them specifically my mom because my mom was always sorry um my mom was always my rock when it came to my anxiety and I think my anxiety started because of my mom's drinking because every night that I would get anxiety which was pretty frequent because she was drinking pretty frequently was my anxiety nights were nights where my mom was drinking and I didn't know what it was. Um, I had a lot of doctor's appointments, blood tests, MRIs and scans and stuff like that. When I was that young, I don't think my doctors wanted to diagnose me right away with anxiety because I was so young and I think um, they just wanted, they thought it was something else. It's a lot of doctor's appointments. Um, I remember being so anxious I couldn't even do an MRI awake they had to put me under um, and eventually they were like okay we're gonna send you to a psychiatrist and um, I went to a psychiatrist and I remember walking in and being so scared because I didn't know what anxiety was and I didn't understand it and I just remember coming out and being really upset because they put me on a medication. I don't remember what went on in the appointment. I think I like blocked it out of my memory because I was so scared and nervous. And that was when I first started taking medication it was in sixth grade. And sixth grade was hell. Uh, my parents literally had to drag me into the building every day for a lot of middle school. It was either 6th or 7th grade, I also started seeing a therapist and they weren't really beneficial to me because I kind of, at that time, I kind of was just really affected by my mom's drinking but I couldn't really talk about my mom's drinking because a lot of the times my mom would sit on the appointments with me and I also just didn't have like the best experience with therapy. So middle school was a really hard time for me because I just thought something was wrong with me. I was really, really underweight because I never was eating because I was so anxious and didn't feel good. I was so, so tiny. My mom and the doctors would like have to force me to drink protein shakes. Like it was 
not fun. And then in middle school, I was also bullied by these two girls that I thought were my friends. And that took a really big toll on me. That was kind of my start with anxiety. And then going into high school, this next part might be triggering to some people because I'm going to talk about um, depression and some like trigger warning self-harm type stuff like if that triggers you i'll put some timestamps down in the description or on the screen of somewhere you can skip to i don't remember freshman year i don't even know if it's because i blocked it out i just don't remember freshman year i think freshman year was decent sophomore year of high school was when my depression got really bad and i started self-harming sophomore year was a really hard year um i was not doing well at all missed a lot of school starting sophomore year and like from sophomore to senior year i missed a, like so much school that i almost didn't graduate high school on time it's just a really really dark place sophomore year was really really hard um i don't want to get into it too much and then junior year um my depression was still bad but it wasn't as bad as it was sophomore year junior year i was still on prozac but i had been on and off of it which you shouldn't do you should not like take yourself off of a medication and definitely consult your doctor but i was always really embarrassed to be on medication and i didn't think i needed to be on it i just i it made me feel like something was wrong with me and i know now it's okay to be on medication but back then i was really scared and ashamed and so i would frequently stop taking it and i remember one time junior year of taking the medication i was on and i my body just kind of started to like shut down and i don't mean like my organs just started to shut down but i just emotionally and physically started to shut down because my body started going through withdrawal and my anxiety was just so bad um i remember junior year when that happened i missed like two and a half weeks of school because i just i felt like i couldn't get out of bed junior year is when i finally went back to the doctor and told them that i don't think the medicine i was on was working so i started a new one and i think it worked for a little bit and then flash forward to senior year, anxiety was a little bit better and then it started to spike again. And that was kind of when my doctor started talking to me about different medication options because obviously the medicine I was on wasn't working. I missed so much school senior year because of my anxiety and I always had to make up like excuses. I didn't have to make up excuses, but I wanted to make up excuses. But I was just so embarrassed about what I was going through. Um, I was so behind in senior year and like just missing school throughout that senior year. I was so behind in one class that I almost didn't graduate. And I, the principal let me walk because he kind of knew my situation. Um, but after walking at graduation, I had to go back into school and finish like after hours, like during the summer because I missed so much school. Through high school, it was, I had summer and then my first year of college, things were okay for a while. I did really well my first year of college. Um, I made the Dean's List, I was doing well, I was, feeling good and then my second year of college things started to go down again i don't know what year this was maybe like 2016 going into 2017 or like late 2017 i have no concept of time i was taking three classes at the time and my anxiety was really bad and i was just really scared to tell anyone and admit to anyone and i started skipping my college classes and I didn't tell anyone and I would pretend like I would get ready for class and get dressed and stuff and go and I would hide in the school building and not go to class then I would come home and act like I went 
and I did that for the whole semester of classes because I was just too ashamed to admit that I was really overwhelmed and not doing okay. And then that was when I went back to my doctor again and started talking meds and what was going on and I started behavioral therapy like in my family and doctor's office so it wasn't like it was an actual therapist but it wasn't like I wasn't going to see like a normal therapist it was like somebody that came into my family practice and I saw so between 2017 between like 2016 2017 um I tried quite a handful of medications just it was a lot on April 8th I believe it was on April 7th or 8th was actually my three-year anniversary of being clean of self-harm took me a long long time to break that i was supposed to be clean in 2015. i flash back forward 2016 2017 i'm sorry this is a mess anxiety was pretty bad in late 2016 2017 and then i was starting to do a little bit better and then in december of 2017 my mom left i've talked about it before in a video but i haven't like talked about it like in depth so it's like weird to say out loud um the beginning of december of 2017 my mom left and she said that she was gonna come back and that she never did she promised she was gonna come back in a few months and she didn't and then may of 2018 um my dad got served out of nowhere by my mom. I was starting to do better between that time because like at that time I like thought she was coming back and my anxiety was getting better. I was making progress. I started seeing a real therapist and um, once my dad got served and I knew she wasn't coming back, um, my mental health just it felt like my world just like flipped upside down. I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm crying a lot and I'm sorry. So frustrated because I was starting to make progress. And then when my mom did that, it's like everything in my life just felt like broken. I don't know how to put it into words. Like if you've experienced this with a parent, um, you know how shitty it is and especially when alcohol was a big part of it just it flipped everything for me and since then my anxiety has just been the worst it's been in my entire life which is saying a lot because in middle school my anxiety was terrible but um these last few months it's been the worst it's ever been it's frustrating because i've been dealing with it for so so long and I know that anxiety is a very up and down thing I know that it's not like linear I know it's gonna be a roller coaster but it's just frustrating when you've been dealing with it for so long and you have like these fleeting moments of happiness and then it just feels like things just keep crashing down all around you kind of leads me into like something else i wanted to talk about alcohol has always played a really really big part in my life i grew up like pouring out beer cans guarding the door driving my mom to the store feeling guilty driving my mom to the store and hiding keys i grew up doing all of that so when she left it kind of felt like my mom chose alcohol over a family, which she basically did. She chose freedom and alcohol over having a family. I mean, knew she, was, she wasn't gonna come back, um, but it didn't make it hurt any less when I really figured out she wasn't gonna come back. Or for like March, I started seeing a therapist and then in August, I started seeing a psychiatrist because at that point, my family doctor was just throwing medications at me. 
and I wasn't happy about it. I didn't want to just be given any medication. They were just giving me medications I did not feel I needed and they were not being helpful. So I started seeing a psychiatrist in August that specifically knows anxiety. I'm still on the path of finding a medication that works for me. I just had a medicine up today. No medication can be a very touchy thing for some people and I know medication can be really really scary but to anybody out there that's been thinking about starting a medication is on one and it feels guilty or anything like that um, it is scary starting a medication obviously because it's a new thing and there's side effects and the side effects can be really scary but your mental health is really important and if you think you're at this point where a medication is something that is going to benefit you that is okay and you should not be shamed for it because there is a lot of people like people with followings that I have seen that pill shame and I know that medication is not for everyone um, I know like for some people medication can make them feel like a zombie and makes them feel worse but that is not the case for everyone and when you have a <coughs> I would burp in the middle of a serious thing. You have a very big platform and you're telling your younger audience that medication isn't the way to go and that you can cure your mental illness with working out and eating healthy and socializing. I think that's a very unfair and unhealthy thing to tell a very impressionable audience. Yes, those things work for some people. Yes, eating healthy and getting on a workout regimen and that helps people feel better but if that doesn't work for some people and they hear somebody they look up to say that they're going to think that's not working for me like what am I supposed to do like there could be a kid that was thinking about starting a medication and now they're scared because somebody they admire had a bad experience with it if you've been thinking about starting a medication and you're scared it's okay it's completely normal to be scared. And first medication might not work for you. Like I've said, I've tried a very fair amount of medication to find one that works with my body. And that's okay. It's not something to be ashamed of. Anxiety is a very hard thing to understand for people that haven't gone through it. And it is also very difficult to understand when you're going through it. It took me a long time to realize that it's not my fault and that it is a chemical imbalance in my brain and it's not like something's wrong with me it's just a chemical imbalance in my brain that i need to work to get figured out and it's not just medication medication isn't going to fix things on their own it's very much a mix of what you do for yourself and how you care for yourself and medication or if you really don't want to do medication um therapy self-care it it's all up to you on how you want to do it not like a linear process you're not just going to keep getting better and better and better it's going to be a very bumpy road and it's very frustrating lately i've been feeling like my life has just kind of been like passing me by but i've just been sitting there watching it go by and i feel like i don't i don't know how to stop it anxiety has consumed me for so long that being anxious is like all I've really known um I feel like I've just been anxious my whole life like I've been lucky and I've had like very happy moments in my life but no matter how great of an experience I might have had and I might have been like happy during it I'm always anxious and it's really frustrating like living like that just like constantly being on this like level of anxiety. I just, I just, I want it to go away so bad. Like I wish I could just blink or snap my fingers. I'm trying to get better, but it's really hard. And for me, my anxiety gets really debilitating. Hence why I haven't really like put out any new music. Um, I've just been dealing with obviously a lot. Like you look at me and you're like, girls going through shit and it's frustrating when like it affects the one thing that like makes me truly happy is music 
and I just feel like my anxiety is like ruined a lot for me like I have really bad concert anxiety now after having to be wheeled out of a Taylor Swift concert and concerts were always my safe space and so I like I avoid a lot of things that I never used to avoid now because of my anxiety a lot of the times I just I feel like I want to jump out of my skin and curl out of my body like I just have these moments of I don't want to be in this body anymore like I just want to like leap out and jump out because it's so uncomfortable I want to feel comfortable in my own body like I want to be content and happy and sometimes I am like sometimes I have good days and I feel good about myself a lot of the time I just wish that I was somebody else I think sometimes I get in this mindset of it's gonna get better like it'll go away and I don't really do anything to try to fix it. I'm just like, oh, like it's fine, it'll go away. It'll go away, like it'll stop, you'll feel better. I think I get like that because I get, I just, I'm so, so tired and I just pray it'll fix itself and it won't. And I think sometimes I'm scared to get better because anxiety is like all I've ever really known. And as uncomfortable as anxiety is, it's become my normal. I don't know if this is making any sense. In some ways, I am scared to let go of my anxiety. For a really long time, I've been just like begging my anxiety to let go of me. But I think in some ways, I also have to learn how to let go of it. I don't know how but it just is like you need to fight harder you need to try harder and I'm sure a lot of you probably get that too like oh like just get up and do something about it like you're not trying hard enough that can be really discouraging when your anxiety is like crippling and debilitating because for some people it is very easy to get up and do things and that makes their anxiety go away but I know for me Personally, when I get really, really bad anxiety, I need to lay down and just try to calm down. Like, I can't just get up and do something. That's not how my body works. A lot of people don't understand it, so something else, like a main point I kind of wanted to convey in this is try not to put too much pressure on yourself to get better on the timeline of somebody else because I know it's very easy for parents, for example, to want to be like okay like we need to get you better like we need to get you better fast like you're fine like they just say all these things that kind of invalidate how you're feeling but I just want you to know that what you f are feeling is valid and even if you might not have a reason to be anxious you are still allowed to be anxious there doesn't always need to be a present reason sometimes there's triggers sometimes there isn't but either way your anxiety is very valid and I just want you to know that and I want you to take care of yourself and don't feel bad. It's really hard because obviously I'm still struggling with it and I need to practice what I preach but maybe by making this video and telling you guys and just talking to you um, maybe it'll help me a little bit. I hope that this helps you. I'm sorry that I cried so much. I don't know what this is. If you're in the same boat as me, if you're going through anything similar in this together, I know it's cheesy to be like, you're not alone, but you're really not. It is a very, very, very lonely feeling, but there's other people that are there with you. And if you ever need somebody to talk to or vent to or rant to, my social media stuff will be in the description and you can talk to me if you need. And on that note, I kind of just want to talk about music for a second because I know a lot of you follow me for my music and I've obviously been very kind of like silent music wise in this last year sorry I've just there's been a lot going on and like I said earlier it makes it hard for me to record and stuff like that also I know I don't need to make this disclaimer but I'm gonna make it anyway this video is not for like attention or for sympathy or for anything like that. This video is for me and to hopefully help somebody else with it. 
yeah i just i need to say that because i know i'll probably get some messages or comments thank you guys for everything and for being really supportive of me no matter what it means a lot to me and yeah i'm sorry i cried so much <laughs> if you guys have any questions or anything like i said you can leave it in the comments and i'll see you when i see you i love you guys with my whole heart